Lots more on the show today. How do you like your brain sliced? Thick or thin? We're going to explain in just a few minutes. Forget leaping lizards. It's apparently flying snakes you need to worry about. Now, that may sound scary, but for Jake Soha, it's just another day at the office. He spent the last several years learning how an animal built for slithering can make extraordinarily leaps through the air. And he's got some new results to share with us now. So, Jake, before we go any further, I'm sure a lot of people at home are saying, what? They can fly? Can you just give us a quick backgrounder on flying snakes and where they live and how good they are at flying? Sure. Uh, flying snakes are a very specialized type of snake. They live in South Asia and Southeast Asia primarily. And they're arboreal animals, so they live in the trees. And on occasion, for reasons that are obscure to us, they will jump off a branch, they'll flatten the body out, and then they'll glide through the air and land safely on a tree or, or the ground. What do these snakes do when they're in the air with their bodies that makes them a flying snake as opposed to just a snake falling out of a tree? So flying snakes do two things that are, are very different from all other gliders or flyers. So first is that they undulate in the air, so they move their heads back and forth, and they, they wave their body. It looks like they're swimming through the air. And the second thing they do is they flatten out. So they jump into the air, and as they're jumping, they take their ribs and they rotate them forward toward the head and then upward toward the spine. And it creates this triangular type shape that, that's rounded and triangular on the top and has this concavity underneath. And this is, this is a very unique and different shape for any type of flyer, either, either animal or engineered. Now you've been looking at these snakes for several years. What was the new question that you were trying to address with this study? We understand pretty well what they're doing in the air, and, and we spent a lot, of, a lot of time trying to figure that out. Um, so we know what they do in the air, and the question then becomes, well, how exactly are they producing aerodynamic forces? So when they enter the air, they don't fall straight down. Um, they have some horizontal movement that, that enables them to get, get um, pretty good travel um, between the trees. And so we were trying to ask, how is it that they, they do this? What, what, what physical factors explain how they glide? So we made physical models with a 3D printer. This is the full thing. But what we did is we took a section of its body and just isolated the cross-sectional shape. So we made straight models that look something like this. And this is just a piece of one. The real one is, is, is actually longer. And you can see here that it has this unique cross-sectional shape that the snake has when it, when it glides. So we took these models and we put them in a water tunnel. The model was connected to force transducers. So when we ran the water, we were able to measure the forces produced by the model. In other words, the forces that the snake would produce in the air that might help to keep it aloft. So you got this whole experiment done. What did you find? We found that, um, that the flying snake's cross-sectional shape is actually pretty good at producing aerodynamic forces. And this is with the caveat, it's, it's at the snake's size and speed. So for the snake and under its conditions, it's actually good at producing aerodynamic forces. And this is surprising to us because the animal is not streamlined in the conventional way. So do you think there are any applications? If this wing looks different from what we've been building things with up till now, do you think that there might be snake-inspired gliding robots or something like that down the road? Yeah, so what's exciting is that, is that we know that the snake does it, and you can potentially build a robot that is very snake-like, and it, the, it can crawl on the ground, it can climb trees, it could get in through cracks like in, in, in rubble, and it can do potentially what the snake does, which is when it gets to the top of something, it can jump off, flatten out, and then glide through the air. So it's a step in the right direction from an animal with no legs. Thanks a lot, Jake. This is great. Thanks, Dan. It's been great talking to you. Okay, we've got a couple more science headlines coming at you. Now, video games are, of course, getting ultra-realistic these days, and it's not just your cousin who doesn't leave the basement who has finally noticed the U.S. military and Northrop Grumman are onto this as well, and that's why they've invented this, the Vipe Virtual Immersive Portable Environment Holodeck. It's a 360-degree room that lets you recreate almost any battlefield situation. 
There's the obvious scenarios like fighting and shooting, but teams can also practice medical procedures, develop their language skills, and fly planes in here. So to keep things as cheap and easy as possible, the developers are also using off-the-shelf gaming tech like this Kinect depth sensing camera. That way they'll be able to upgrade it anytime they want. Now, if only the enemies would get a room like this as well and everybody could just fight on the virtual battlefield and there would be no real war, that would be really great. I like it. Mm. That's a really peaceful, nice idea. Thanks, Dan. All right, we're going inside the world's most famous brain now. Einstein's. Right. We're going inside the world's second most famous brain now. Ah, uh, HM's. Yeah, we're going to a San Diego lab as they slice his frozen brain into sheets thinner than paper, all to figure out why HM, or Henry Molaisen, couldn't form new memories. See, in 1953, he had an operation to cure his epilepsy, and it did not go well. After that day, he could not form a single new memory. This case has baffled doctors for decades, but we're finally getting some answers. Researchers are taking all of these slices and building a full 3D model of this extraordinary brain so we can fly through it and try to figure out what messed up his memory center. Now, they think they might have found it. There's one tiny little lesion in the left orbitofrontal cortex that's just behind his left eye. That might be enough to wipe out his ability to make new memories. Very cool. Okay, up next, how do you feel when your back hurts? Be a bit annoyed, uh, be a bit grumpy. Well, these horses also experience back pain, but these motion capture cameras will tell you the perfect way to ride to stop hurting your horse. That's next.